So the first, the first question, uh, our, our market outlook for 2023, inflation, interest rates, corporate earnings, uh, and, and how innovation should fare in that environment. Okay, well... Uh, we know that we're getting a lot of deflationary signals, uh, but the Fed isn't really buying into that yet. Uh, we think that uh, uh, the bond market, though, will start to convince the Fed. Uh, so the bond market is tele- telegraphing either much lower than inflation, uh, lower than expected inflation, or 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 recession, or both. And uh, we've seen the 10-year Treasury bond yield drop from uh, four and a quarter to three. It got down to 3.45. It's around 3.6 right now. Uh, So that doesn't leave very much room if you assume that the long bond is kind of a proxy for uh, how, how fast nominal GDP will grow. It doesn't leave enough room for uh, much growth and inflation. Uh, and we also know that the market always leads the Fed. And I think the bond market is speaking very loudly. Uh, Jeff Gundlach, uh, very interestingly, uh, double lines, uh, famous uh, bond investor, very, very successful. He has made the point, okay, it does look like inflation's coming down. Why is it going to stop at 2%? And uh, we would agree with that. We're seeing a lot of deflation in the pipeline. Uh, commodity prices, uh, discounts at retail during the holiday season to, to, uh, to clean the shelves of, uh, shelves of massive inventories. Uh, so we think that's going to show through in terms of inflation. And very importantly, uh, housing has taken it on the chin this year. Usually the Fed is very sensitive to that. Autos as well. They never, they really went nowhere, and now used car pricing is down 14% on a year-over-year basis. Uh, so, so inflation will come down, and and innovation actually is going to be part of that equation. Uh, the truly disruptive innovation platforms around which we have centered our research, so gene sequencing, robotics energy storage, artificial intelligence, and especially artificial intelligence, as well as blockchain technology. All of them are deflationary in in nature. Good deflation, it it should cause a boom in the products and services associated uh, with with innovation. But deflation, another source of deflation. So uh, our confidence there is building. We've been right on the inventory build, the commodity price decline, uh, and I think normally the, the market would have responded already. The market is waiting for the Fed, and uh, we think the Fed's rhetoric will change first, and then its actions will change. And we think that's all going to take place in 2023. Uh, now, another question. Given that our strategy from our, uh, our strategies from their peaks have dropped anywhere from 60 to 80 percent since February of 21. So this has been almost two years. Um, Why do we not turn defensive like most managers are doing? Well, um, there's a a very important explanation for that. Um, We do one thing. We do not uh, pretend to be an asset allocator. We are, our, our research and our, our investment investments are centered on disruptive innovation. And so uh, when advisors and individuals choose our strategy, they're not uh, choosing it uh, alone. Uh, they have more diversified portfolios, of course, including real estate, uh, the biggest uh, asset most consumers have. Uh, is is housing. Uh, so we are one part of an investment portfolio, and uh, therefore we would uh, never be uh, using cash. Uh, we would expect advisors and individuals uh, to, to um, basically raise cash and segregate it from their investment portfolios. Uh, in terms of our strategies, we during downturns, concentrate towards our highest conviction names. Uh, And so we have been doing that now for 
uh, nearly two years, and the history, history would suggest that that concentration strategy plays out very well in the subsequent rebounds. Uh, and we do think this rebound will be quite powerful. Uh, this year has been the most difficult year of my career, worse than 08, 09, and I would venture to say that it has been the most difficult year of many in, in investors' career, careers. Uh, the only thing that worked this year was energy. It's up almost 50%. Uh, and many people are asking us, why don't we diversify into energy since it's working? Well, the reason for that is we think it will stop working. Uh, if our uh, forecasts for electric vehicles and autonomous taxi platforms are correct, then oil demand could drop by roughly 30%, 30 million barrels a day during the next five to 10 years. And we believe that demand destruction uh, has already started. It looks like uh, oil demand peaked in 2019, and we're still in the process of uh, peaking out, I would say, in the 100 million barrels per day range. But we think the resolution of that basing period here is going to be down. Uh, so we wouldn't uh, be investing in energy, and we think the indexes that have rebalanced and now are including more energy uh, are, are mistaken, and um, those investments, that rebalancing will not work out. Uh, now, another question. You have been buying more Tesla and other stocks during the downturn, uh, and, and yet the prices have fallen further and are performance decline has worsened. Uh, with interest rates and prices uh, fluctuating so widely, and in, in this case they probably mean increasing, uh, will an investment focus on innovation work? Well, uh, we believe that the leading indicator correctly is inflation, and it, it has peaked. The inflation rate has peaked. Uh, almost uh, Every measure of inflation has peaked. Uh, most of those uh, metrics peaking out in March or June uh, of this year, in the first or the second quarter. Uh, so typically, that's a, a, a good thing for innovation. Uh, but as I just mentioned, I think the market is so skittish and has been so terrorized by the most rapid increase in interest rates ever. We have never seen an 18-fold increase in interest rates within one year. It has truly terrorized the markets. And uh, I think that the fear is palpable. Uh, in fact, I think according to the Bank of America um, surveys, recent surveys of fund managers and advisors, it's probably the advisors, uh, we haven't seen this amount of cash on, on the sidelines since uh, I think it was 2006, maybe even 2001. Uh, I do know also the same survey shows that the put-to-call ratio uh, in the U.S. market, meaning um, those short relative to those long uh, puts, calls, um, is at 1.5 now, and it has not been that high since 2001. 